postmodernism, and the long arm of Marx. These disciplines draw their philosophy from multiple sources. All are heavily influenced by the Marxist humanists. One such figure is Max Horkheimer, who developed critical theory in the 1930s. Any brief summary of his ideas is bound to be oversimplified, but Horkheimer <laughs> regarded himself as a Marxist. He believed that Western principles of individual freedom or the free market were merely masks that served to disguise the true conditions of the West, inequality, domination, and exploitation. He believed that intellectual activity should be devoted to social change instead of mere understanding, and hoped to emancipate humanity from its enslavement. Horkheimer and his Frankfurt School of Associated Thinkers, first in Germany and later in the U.S., aimed at a full-scale critique and transformation of Western civilization. More important in recent years has been the work of French philosopher Jacques Derrida, leader of the postmodernists who came into vogue in the late 1970s. Derrida described his own ideas as a radicalized form of Marxism. Marx attempted to reduce history and society to economics, considering culture the oppression of the poor by the rich. When Marxism was put into practice in the Soviet Union, China, Vietnam, Cambodia, and elsewhere, economic resources were brutally redistributed. Private property was eliminated, and rural people forcibly collectivized. The result? Tens of millions of people died. Hundreds of millions more were subject to oppression rivaling that still operative in North Korea, the last classic communist holdout. The resulting economic systems were corrupt and unsustainable. The world entered a prolonged and extremely dangerous Cold War. The citizens of those societies lived the life of the lie, betraying their families, informing on their neighbors, existing in misery without complaint, or else. Marxist ideas were very attractive to intellectual utopians. One of the primary architects of the horrors of the Khmer Rouge, Q. Samphan, received a doctorate at the Sorbonne before he became the nominal head of Cambodia in the mid-1970s. In his doctoral thesis, written in 1959, he argued that the work done by non-farmers in Cambodia's cities was unproductive. Bankers, bureaucrats, and businessmen added nothing to society. Instead, they parasitized the genuine value produced through agriculture, small industry, and craft. Samphan's ideas were favorably looked upon by the French intellectuals who granted him his PhD. Back in Cambodia, he was provided with the opportunity to put his theories into practice. The Khmer Rouge evacuated Cambodia's cities, drove all the inhabitants into the countryside, closed the banks, banned the use of currency, and destroyed all the markets. A quarter of the Cambodian population were worked to death in the countryside, in the killing fields. <laughs>